Alright guys, let's overclock the i7-6700K, which is few clicks. So the first click we're gonna do is set the BIOS to default settings. Click OK. And make sure that the XMP is disabled. Alright, it's time to go to advanced mode. Now that we're here, let's go ahead and change to AI Tweaker. Just click on that tab. Right here we can see the overclocking options. You can see that the first tab, the first option, it's set to auto for auto overclocking. And it's you know overclocking to 4.2 gigahertz, 4200 megahertz. So I'm gonna change that to manual. From that you can see the block frequency it's at 100 you don't want to change that the only thing that we want to change it's core ratio limit so if you want to go to 47 4.7 gigahertz check change right here to 47 simple as that And you can see up at the top that is giving you already 4700 megahertz. If you want to change to 4.6, you can change that to 46, click enter, and you can see up at the top that is now giving us 4.6 or 4700 megahertz. In my option, I am doing 4700 megahertz, 4.7. The next thing that you want to do is, like I said, simple and easy. Come over here and change the core voltage. If you set it on auto, it's gonna spike up to 1.4 plus, and probably you don't want that. So change that to manual mode, and right here, what I use is 1.345. And when it's in use, it goes up to 1.375. After that, we click exit, save changes and reset. Now you don't see any changes here because my chip was already overclocked. I already overclocked this chip and I ran some tests and that's the reason why I am making this video. But these are the settings that I use. All right, so click exit and let's go into our operating system and make sure that our overclock is solid. So right here guys, I'm gonna use ADA64 and some other programs. All right guys, well here I am on Windows and I got ADA64 Stream, the program that I use to stress test my CPUs and my overclocks. I also got this new program called CPU ID Performance Monitor and it just, you know, checks the performance of every single core. I recommend this program guys, I'm gonna leave the link to that in the description. And right here I got CPU-C and I, I click on the memory tab to make sure you know the the RAM speeds are good. I also got ADA64 the CPU ID tab. I make sure my core voltage is good and whatnot. And I also come over here, click on this tab, and I check my temperatures before I click on that start button to start stress testing. Now, guys, I have done this stress test about three or four times already. One, the first one was 12 hours at 4.7. It passed. There was no crash. Uh, the, the next one was for five hours trust me guys i have spent a lot of hours <laughs> uh, running this uh, stress test so guys my overclock my 4.7 it's solid it's great i am happy with it i hope that you hit it as well but if you don't try 4.5 or 4.6 and see if you are and see if you have good luck all right guys enough with the rambling let's go back to the bias and let's turn on that xmp and get the right settings turned on let's go all right guys well here we are on the bias one more time so what we're going to do is we're going to go to advanced mode Alrighty, now that we're here we're going to leave everything alone but we're going to change one setting from manual we're going to change to XMP and this is going to come up on the screen you can pause the video if you want to read this part click yes and here we are my XMP it's turned on now guys this my memory speeds it's 2400 
it doesn't go up it doesn't go down that's what i like about these memory sticks i got 32 gigabytes at 2400 megahertz so honestly for me it didn't make any change or difference if i change um, if i turn on the xmp probably did probably didn't with xmp on or off it was at 2400 megahertz so it's okay but in your case if you're running 3000 or 2800 megahertz or 2666 on in in any of those speeds then you want to do what i did right now so right here what i'm doing is i'm going to click save and reset and i'm going to go back into windows and run the stability test one more time all right guys well we are back again on windows and pretty much what you want to do is run your stability test one more time make sure that you have a stable overclock you can run the stability test as many hours as you want, as many minutes as you want, but based in my experience, overclocking the first two minutes running the stability test, if you don't have a good overclock, it's going to crash. It's going to take you to the blue screen, or ADA64 is just going to come up with a red bar at you know at the top. And it's going to say you know that something went wrong with the overclock. So the first two minutes, <laughs> if the overclock is not good, it's going to crash. Have that guaranteed. So if you're running an stability test for more than 10 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour, and if it doesn't crash, then you are good to go. Make sure you run your games, or if you are a video editor, you know, do your you know editing and whatnot, and enjoy your overclock. Simple and easy, guys. Overclocking is very simple and easy. Some YouTubers out there they make these videos so complicated. It's ridiculous. So guys, thanks for watching this video. Hit the like down below, share the video, share the love. I'll see you guys next time. If this video helped you, like I said one more time, hit the like down below. It makes me smile. I'll see you guys next time. Stay beautiful as always.